Okay, as a person that's a product of the 70s, I have to remind people that didn't really live in it, um, and you'll see it in the movies and films and everything, we were obsessed with green. Absolutely obsessed with the color green in the 70s. If you go back to any movie, any, especially movies that are on location, yeah. green was everywhere. And you had to have, to have plants. Mm. You had to have pottery plants everywhere, including your office. And this is a movie that doesn't really, a theme color doesn't remind, doesn't dominate, but it just reminds you how much we were obsessed <laughs> with green in the 70s. So what you're saying is the 70s didn't die when disco died. The 70s died when they officially changed the blue screen to the green screen, and then no one could wear green in movies anymore. That's right. Yeah, I, I would take it. Right. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. But if you're going to spit up green, I was like, of course it's green. Of yeah. Course. Of course. Yeah. Because it's the 70s. It's right. notable. Yeah. So we're going to talk about uh, apparently another Canadian horror film in our. It was a top grossing one. Our unofficial know. Canadian yeah, horror film <laughs> marathon, apparently. Um, yeah. Directed by uh, one of my favorite people, David Cronenberg. Yeah. Rabbit. Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm one of your hosts, Kyle Gothy from GoatFilmReviews.com. Hey, I'm Nick from the St. Paul Filmcast. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again for finding us and for our loyal fans. Thank you for us to uh, continue to support the show. Hey, you can follow the show on Twitter and on Instagram. We do have a Patreon. Check that out for some great deals. And we're going to talk about a uh, cult following movie of the 70s. It's, it's, uh, it's about as old as I am. Wrap it. So after an experimental plastic surgery saves a young woman's life following a motorcycle crash, that was hell of a crash, Rose develops a taste for blood. As her victims develop the same symptoms and begin feeding on others, the city is thrown into chaos as more and more are infected. Okay, so after his movie Shivers and before the movie Brood, uh, we have Cronenberg's, which kind of put him out in the stratosphere of filmmaking with this movie Rapid. Yeah. Um, I think it's, a, even though it's a considered a Canadian horror film, I think it's not entirely 100%. There are some mutual exchanges of American grants and everything. So it's not a 100% Canadian film. Yeah, we got Ivan like, Reitman working on it as a producer. Yeah, yeah, the like the late, wonderful. great uh, Ivan Reitman, who was yeah. a big proponent of getting his Canadian friends into the, the stratosphere. And so I'm sure that he had some connections at that point. Yes. You know, uh, in bringing that to the fold. It's funny because. I, I wasn't sure and I didn't look up to see if this was a before or after Shivers because they're kind of in my mind that the names are a little interchangeable. Uh, they have kind of the same aesthetic to them. but And they're, they're very similar in a lot of ways as movies. No. Uh, I think this is a more clean cut and polished movie than Shivers <laughs> even though I think Shivers is an overall better experience just because it's more unique. Yeah. Um, what I would say about Rabbit is that it actually feels like the movie I wanted George Romero's The Crazies to be. Uh, when I saw his film, which was kind of like, again, like a zombie film that was about, you know, rage virus kind of zombies, like precursor to 28 yeah. Days Later, Good catch, yeah. um, was that, like, as I watched The Crazies, I felt the movie was just kind of lost in trying to figure out, how do I make a zombie movie that's not like all the other zombie movies I made? And Romero kind of stumbled with that a bit. I think this is a more clean-cut and polished version of what I was looking for with The Crazies. And a little more clean-cut for Cronenberg, too, because yeah. I think it's... It, this is the reason why I mentioned this movie as we're going to talk about because it's a staple of where Cronenberg would go with his career mm -hmm. with um, individual choices, you know, because eventually he would do like a Stephen King movie, The mm -hmm. Dead Zone, which put him in popularity and one of the more success. But this is kind of the nature of where he likes to work. Yeah. And this is one of the first movies that show where it's going to go. Yeah, and again, it, it's this because he's horror. like pulling back on all of, he's not really being as experimental within film, he's being experimental within the subgenre that is the modern zombie film taken from what Romero did. Uh, and I think, yeah, it's fascinating because he kind of, yeah, he pulls back on all of his experimentation, really, and just focuses on driving forth, like, a clean-cut narrative. Yeah. And so that's why I think it's kind of odd, is because he doesn't experiment as much. It's a really well-made movie, and it's very entertaining. Um, right, even the intro with the motorcycle, because that's... They got some very interesting shots there because mm -hmm. you don't only just sit on the woods and watch the motorcycle yeah. go by. But they put it on the camera on the motorcycle. There's some great shots with that, the, with the van, and they set it up, and you can tell it, it's cut really well mm -hmm. for how they do it. But obviously, they probably did a motorcycle just go out of ramp and throw them in there. Yeah. But even it's good. It's a fascinating stunt to do. Well, it is, be especially because we look at things today in terms of, like, I have a phone. I can make a movie. Um we we couldn't you couldn't put your phone or a tiny like one pound device on a on a motorcycle to film that scene. Yeah. You had to figure out how to do it. There was a lot more ingenuity in like how can right. I make this scene have work. That size to so we out. take that for granted. I think today we take a, a scene like what that one is. It's a pretty uh, powerful moment, uh, a pretty exciting sequence to open your film with, kind of like in the middle of the action. 
and then we we have the fallout and that kind of gives us a little bit of a lull where we can start to focus on putting the story tethers out there. Uh, before we move on for a little more other details, I just want to clarify, my, my what I interpret with Cronenberg, especially with this movie, and I'm going to kind of do a little scenic route with it, but I think Cronenberg likes to talk about body horror and the changes of body, like Videodrome mm -hmm. and uh, stuff like The Fly. And everything else. And, and <laughs> fly, everything else. But I don't think he had, and it, things turn horrific, but I don't think he's talking about that it's evil. And more or less like this in Rapid. You, is it a benefit? Mm -hmm. Is it a cure? Is it a disease? Is it something that's it's definitely something alterating? But I don't think he gives it like it's completely evil. Yeah. Even like when Marilyn Chambers Hammett, she's like, well, what the hell's a big deal? Yeah. <laughs> what I have this? So what? Deal with it. And everybody else, I'm passing along, and it doesn't. So I think his kind of viewpoint is is it's not really horrific. It's horrific, but it, is it totally evil or bad to happen? Well, and there's there's always the the quest for moving. If you disagree, forward. Please, yeah. I think it's I think it's all about the quest for moving forward. Yes. Ultimately, bringing us backward. You know, I mean, this film That's has to idea. do with an experimental plastic surgery. Like it's going to save her life, and I guess it does. It does. But, but what what's the cost of that that saving? Right. Just like with the fly, like what's the cost of this this driving forward of technology? Um, and really, outside of like a couple of movies he made. Like in the last 20 years, he's been doing that his whole career, which has been talking about like not even just technology, but just parts in which the way that humans can move forward and then ultimately move themselves back. Like the obsession with a video drone. Like yeah. Obsession and you become part of your, the obsession becomes you. Mm -hmm. And you become the obsession. It's like interaction. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much what Cronenberg is talking about with I think his entire theme of body horror. Yeah. Especially with the fly. Yeah, with the fly. And I, I see it with things like even just the dead zone too, like. You have a man who has, you know, psychically moved forward, and how do I use this tool and maintain my sanity without myself personally well, moving Walken, backwards? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> sanity is loose with Christopher Walken, but I think that's yeah. kind of what's at play here too. And he he's able to insert that just gently enough into yeah. a in a pretty classic zombie tale. So there's let's talk about a little bit about the, there's the sexual component to this movie, and of course I think he recognized it. Obviously, there's a reason why Marilyn Chambers is in this movie. Yeah. But, but there's an underlining. It's not an overall hit you over the head sexual component. There's a deep undertone of it, and I think he's hitting out with the alternating body change like his themes. But yeah. there's an undercurrent of sexual component to this film. Yeah, and it's it's kind of different. Not than to mention the thing that comes out of her arm and <laughs> looks like a you know male phallus thing that. Yeah. When I was I was thinking about the comparisons, especially because there's a hot tub scene in this film, I was thinking of the comparisons with Species. Uh, I think Species which, that lifted it. I yeah. think Species really like kind of goes more into the eroticism of what's going on first, and then diverts into the horror. Yeah. Whereas like Good there's call. nothing in this movie that I found to be like I mean beautiful people, but I was like sickened and disturbed beforehand. Like there's that that on, in oncoming dread that happens even like when when she wakes up and she starts to hug that. That doctor that's checking on her the whole time. I'm not like, ooh, check this out. I'm like, oh, what's going to happen? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm like getting prepped for the pain and the terror. Yes. So I think he plays with it a bit, a bit differently. He uses that as kind of a like complete polar opposite juxtaposition. Be like, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be enjoying this. <laughs> no. No, and that's what I say. There's an undercurrent of is she masculine, a little more masculine when she gets the disease. Just a little more out there because she's actually down. You know, the hot tub scene. She takes mm -hmm. over the. Environment. She's over dominating. Yeah, and from the moment she enters the room, too, the other person is suspicious of her. The other one that's in the hot tub doesn't seem like she's suspicious. She's walking up saying, hello, can I sit in here with you? But she knows something's not right here, and now I'm cornered. And so, again, like, we have that, we know there's something wrong happening, but he's playing it against itself. Yeah. Uh, when we talked about, uh, we were going to talk about, Corona, this is not your favorite Cronenberg movie. No. I think this is actually my first time watched, though. Oh, I've never seen this one. Okay. This is one of the few Cronenbergs that I hadn't gotten around to. I was like circumnavigating a bunch of other ones. Yeah. Um, but but it you have seen collection. Shivers. I've seen Shivers. Yeah, okay. that was a date night with my wife. So ah, oh, nice, <laughs> nice, nice. But I think it's a very important if you like Cronenberg's work. You know, even Rick and Morty love him for God's sakes. Yeah. Oh my God, two seasons worth of, of television. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, body altering, and they actually uh, almost to the boarding set obsessive. But I think. <laughs> Like Cronenberg would say, I don't think he would recognize himself as a horror director, but more or less working on a theme. Yeah. I think if you talk to him a little bit, he won't say, I'm just, yeah, I'm fine, I'm a horror director, but I don't think that's what he 
wants to go for. I think people like to work in horror just to shock and everything, but I think he has a very hardcore, what I meant to talk about a couple minutes ago, what his theme is. Well, I think that he, much like Stephen King, much like Wes Craven and John Carpenter, I don't think Cronenberg enters into the, he's not in the public opinion considered on the level with them, but I think he is. He just never had like a Freddy or a Jason or a Michael or, you know, like he never had like that to his name. But Cronenberg, I think, recognized what a lot of those filmmakers and writers thought, which is you can get away with more doing horror. It's more accessible to people. And I guess you, you get less people, like, you get less people uh, squawking at you about how to make your horror yeah. film because you can do it low budget. You can access certain elements, and it's incredibly translatable. Everybody likes horror. And, and I think that the complaint today, you know, we get a lot of people that are like, oh, don't do this woke horror stuff. And it's like, horror has always been woke. Horror has always been questioning. Horror well, has always been all, for, curious. Yeah. Now, for me, at the core, it's always been about feminism. I think mm -hmm. if you go write a good horror movie, and here the question is, what is feminism to mm -hmm. Because it's a female, right? Yeah. And then she, all of a sudden, she gets a personality when she gets this <laughs> thing. Now she's got a personality. And then when she has it, she's like, well, what the hell's a big deal? So what? You know, you're saying because like the movie begins basically with her as an accessory for a male character. She, he's like a she's like a backpack he's wearing on that yep. on the motorcycle. And then Alteri <laughs> changes. Now she's the central character with this virus. And then whenever situation that the male enters, you're like, you're gone because she, she's now at the core. And, it and he can't control her. You know, <laughs> right? Yeah. And she's the one doing the penetrating with the yeah. thing. I kind of on her. It's funny. It's like armpit. I just don't get the hilarious. I was what well, the first time it happened. I couldn't tell because I mean, it's like the seventies. Like the makeup effect isn't like fully, no, you is. know, solidly done. It, so what yeah. happened? I'm like, what is what is that? What part of her body is that coming? Out of? Right, the cherry corn syrup blood. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I appreciate that kind of blood though. I'm I'm a fan of like the seventies blood, which is like I almost the over the top. Maybe it's so we can get away with more with the censors, because that's how like Dawn of the Dead blood is too. It's incredibly oh silly god, blood. yeah, it looks like li melted licorice. Yeah. yeah, and I mean even at the time, even like the the action films, like the the samurai movies that that you would see in, in our foreign markets, uh, would be like that like beautiful blood was kind of how Tarantino would describe it, where it's just like over the top. You know it's not real, but you can get away with more, and you can have more fun with it. Kind of like Tenebrae <laughs> when she cuts off her arm. Exactly, like Tenebrae is silly. Kind of decorate <laughs> with my arm cut off. I yeah. wish I could paint my room like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think like Rabbit, you know, you, you have a point. Like Rabbit, it's, I guess it's, it's themes and it's questions are just way more under the surface than his other movies. He is more on the nose with things like The Brood, things like Shivers, things like The Fly. Like he's more on the nose with a lot you know, of What the hell career. the twin brother, Jeremy Irons with the twin brothers. Yeah, brother, Dead yeah. Ringers is the Dead same Ring way where it's just like, I'm going to hit you over the head with it. And not, yeah. not to a detriment, but it's, it's there, it's visible. Whereas you see what's going on with Rabbit. But it's very, very under the surface. And you talk about that he didn't get a franchise movie, horror yeah. movie, but he he did get killed by Jason. That's true. <laughs> yeah. He is killed by Jason. One of his other actors but appears in a Jason. The Jason episode. Outer Space movie, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, and he should have gotten Nightbreed. But Jason uh, X—that's what it took a while, right? Took a while. Get my bearings. Fun fact: Jason X is the best killer in space movie. It's better than Leprechaun Four, Critters Four, and Hellraiser Four. Anyway, uh, back to what we were saying. Yeah, like he did. You know. He, he, that's again though David Cronenberg is aware that he's a horror icon he's having fun with the the genre and I think he's using the things that disturb him to tell realistic stories um, or, or real relatable stories I should and say he, dan he dances on a sexual component to most of the films that he yeah like Videotron of course mm -hmm. people pick up a Harry into it and then you have like the, the, the 1992 movie Crash where people don't get and arouse just literally about it. <laughs> people that have to crash cars to get excited. Yeah. yeah. So I think what Rabbit has going for it is that it's probably, I would say, the most... Cronenberg movie of all. Well, I would say the most accessible if you look just purely on the merits. Like, between that one, maybe The Fly, I guess. The most accessible of his body horror movies. Yeah. yeah. Um, at least in that top It's a launch pad. I think if you, yeah. if you like Cronenberg and you want to see where he's going to go, it, you have to see this movie. Yeah. Uh, and, that, and that's why I guess I... I, I want to say that I was expecting something different from it, just because it is very clean cut. It's very by well, the covers. Forward. Right, you expect something very like Groundhog. Yeah, Groundhouse. and I yeah. didn't know much about the film. All I really had was the poster for the original and the poster for the remake that came out a couple years ago, and they didn't really do much to equate the story. I try to avoid reading about stories or, or knowing the story of the film as I watch it. Yeah. So I, I, I want to say that I expected something very different because he's he's never done such a straightforward horror movie as this one, that I was like wondering what's gonna I was expecting some grand twist but as it played out I was like it's not a grand twist but it's just a really clever 
well executed horror movie. It doesn't have that. Not every movie has to have that like grandiose moment no. to it. No. This one just works itself all the way through. And like I said, it's a better crazies than it's the not really movie a, crazies. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, it's not really like a crash in ending. Yeah. I think if I, that's what I thought when it be because you start with kind of a crash. He likes that collision kind of a night, but it just goes up kind of like a vapor. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, you know in like a lion out like a like a lamb. Right, <laughs> a little bit. Right, and you, you think you expect a little more grindhouse from it from the cover or whatever we put up there. But yeah, yeah, I appreciate the dreary like over the credits though garbage truck moment. I appreciate that the film kind of does end with like a oh that's just that's that's where we're going okay and then it's just credits over the final moments of the movie. I was I was pretty impressed by how like. It didn't feel like the wind was taken out of the sails, though, either. No, no. You know, because you could have that. You could have a movie that's got this bombastic act two and then just kind of falls apart, and this one actually just kind of like refocuses on story, and it doesn't feel like it was detrimented for that. No. There's some great scenes of people just all of a sudden they start flipping out. I love those. Yeah. That's the best part of this movie, is just all of a sudden he's in surgery and, ah, I'm gonna eat you. Yeah. Or the guy who goes to the, what, the, the little bar. The diner, pop, yeah. The diner, ah, I wanna eat you. <laughs> I need meat, I need it now. <laughs> Or you go to the train station, all of a sudden it just ah, I want to eat you. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's constant. All of a sudden, the, they flip. They flip. It's I love it. Well, and as far as the zombie genre go, I'm a little. I'm I'm more of a Romero zombie than I am a fast running Dawn of the Dead. Twenty eight days later, or like the remake Dawn of the Dead. I'm more of like the original Dawn of the Dead. I like the Day of the Dead. I like these slow moving zombies as a metaphor it's, it's, for like. Ever, it's circumnavigating. It's yeah. a, it, encompassing. The swarm is more terrifying to me than the guy who goes crazy and runs for you. This is... Let me just think for a second. I think this might be my favorite of the fast-moving, like, rage zombie, as we would call it. Well, this it is, yeah. It's it's not exactly zombies, but it's pretty much zombies. Yeah, <laughs> you get an infected disease. And yeah. Is it really a disease? I think that's what Colonel Brady is. Is it really a... a maybe it is a cure. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's Maybe what he it was a disease. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but I'll, I would love to be there for that conversation with Marilyn and say, um, you, "Can you take your shirt off for the scene?" Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to check these armpits. I don't, we got prosthetics to work here. I don't here. think she would have a problem with it. All right, <laughs> all right. You want to take you want to take your clothes off for the scene? Yeah. All right. All right. Perhaps. I mean, I guess he maybe knew that he was going to make a movie that was going to involve someone being relatively nude for a, a good chunk of it. Yeah. And it, it's it's a question of like. She's gonna be comfortable doing that. Yeah. You know, I thought she was engaging enough too. Um, no, you think she'd like, be a horrible actress and just kind of say her lines, but she she did pretty good. Yeah, because I'm not aware of any actual acting. Like, uh, I know, I, there you I go. get it, but like, there you go. like in in a narrative feature acting that she's done yeah. prior to this. So I I don't know. I I was surprised to see her performing as well. She was because she's the central focus of the movie. Like we think we're gonna be like following the the boyfriend. Yeah. We don't. We follow her most of the movie and they're just in her wake you know yeah. and you gotta look for green so. yeah exactly look for <laughs> don't don't drink it's when you see green it's not a worthy drinking game don't do it um <laughs> just obsessed with that damn color <laughs> all right have you seen Gronenberg? my yeah. god uh if you're rick and morty fan you, you should know what the hell they're talking about yeah, I mean, there's an, season one, episode four. Uh, everyone Cronenberg goes Cronenberg. World? Yeah, Cronenberg World. Right. <laughs> uh, so let us know down below your favorite Cronenberg film, and let us know your thoughts on Rabbit as well. Um, I was I was pleasantly surprised, even though I, I love the filmmaker. I was pleasantly surprised to find another great movie in his in his. Uh, He's collection. got a great death scene in for Jason. Jason yeah. really takes it to him. Jason, I mean, you can tell he kind of enjoys it. Yeah. Is your favorite Cronenberg film one where he's an actor or one where he's a director? Let us know. Um, and while you're down there, like Nick pointed out, go ahead and like and subscribe. Uh, there are two things that you can do that are free that help support the channel, and yep. we really do appreciate it. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Hey, and if you can spare a coffee every single month, consider joining the Patreon. The link's down in the description. For as low as a dollar, we have tiers where you can enter, be a part of our discussion on the Patreon itself, get access to Picks with Kyle and Nick. For $5 and up, though, you can join our rotating uh, group of film pickers yes. who pick the movies that we're going to talk about on the show. I'm glad um, you did all that. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, we thank you guys for joining us. We don't have a teleprompter. Either. No, no, we don't. You know, it's just. Mm. Um, <laughs> right. But yeah, thank you guys for joining us, and you can find all my film reviews over at goatfilmreviews.com. Hey, you can find my podcast, the Saint Paul Filmcast, when I interview local independent filmmakers from the Twin Cities area. Anywhere you find podcasts, really. So if you didn't need an excuse not to get close to someone's armpit, now you've got one. Right. Have a good it's day. Not just the order, right? <laughs>